is my six-year-old son. He states that he identifies as a girl boy. I would never put in a place that wasn't safe. Oh my God, what happened? Oh, it's a shard in his foot. guys what's up it's like at and today okay today we might be getting ourselves into some trouble i don't really know today we're talking about a family vlog channel the mcclouds this might be messy but i'm gonna try not to be so let's just get into it so what is my problem with the mcclouds or more accurately my problem with their channel well it's kind of a lot but Number one is safety. These kids' safety really doesn't seem like it's prioritized on the channel. Oh my god, what happened? Oh, it's a shard in his foot. I'm literally here to save your life. <laughs> Got a little injury. <laughs> Looks pretty gnarly. Did you fall? Did you fall? He's getting a band-aid, I swear. I'm videoing. Come on, Rachel. Come on, Rachel. Imagine your kid, your niece, your dear little sibling cuts themselves on some glass or really busts open their leg, and your first thought is, oh, hold on, wait, wait, sweetie, I need to record this. The viewers are going to love it. Hey guys, Editing Walkout here. Real quick, while I was going frame by frame to censor this kid's face, I realized there's a moment where you can actually see the injury on their foot, so if you're squeamish, look away, but here it is. I don't know, that looks like a pretty gnarly cut to me. I would not immediately pull out my camera to film. What do y'all think? Security and safety should be a priority. Same for the butt grabbing video. Look, I get that it's supposed to be like a cute, silly moment, but some family moments should probably just stay family moments and not be posted. You want to keep your kids as safe as possible online, and this just is not it. You never know who's watching. This is oversharing. This is invasive for them. There's also this video. which if the mom wants to go to drag shows, fine. That's her prerogative. But her kids, no, drag shows are very adult. Like it's a whole nightlife thing and it's often very cool. Like take this exact situation, okay? And replace all the drag queens with cis women in the exact same outfits. Don't even try to gaslight me on this. Drag shows are not a place for kids, non-binary or otherwise. Actually, let's talk about that too. A very large part of the McLeod channel centers around this kid, who I'm gonna call E. Now, rather than explain to you who E is, I think it just makes more sense to show you since it's changed so much. So E went from a boy who likes dresses, to a girl boy, to non-binary, and finally to a girl. Now look, I'm not saying it's impossible that this kid is trans. I'm not even saying she's being forced into it, okay? But imagine how hard it will be if they aren't happy with this choice that they made when they were literally six. So much of this channel is focused on E and her gender. Do you feel more like a girl or like a boy? A girl. Why do you say that? Because I'm a girl boy. 
Hi, Coro. I am here. I'm Mika. And can I ask you a couple questions? Yeah. Okay, you say you're a girl boy, right? Yeah. What does that mean? I like good dress. You like wearing dresses? Yeah. How does wearing dresses make you feel? Look at my bitch. There is a lot of pressure on this kid. E being a boy in a dress and then ultimately trans has brought the channel a lot, if not all of its popularity. There is a lot of positive reinforcement and attention and they get to meet celebrities and do photo shoots. So, so much of this success hinges on E and that's not fair. They're literally only six. Look, I'm kind of outing myself here but in elementary school, I really, really wanted to be a kitten. Not a cat, okay, a kitten. And this was not like a little phase I went through for like a week, a month. It was like for a whole year. I know it's not the same thing as being trans. I know it's not the same as gender dysphoria. I'm not saying that it is. I'm just saying kids want all sorts of stuff. And I, I had it planned out. I wore little paper cat ears that I made around the house. I tied like a belt around my waist to like be a tail, shut up, I'm not a furry. <laughs> and if I had been encouraged and gotten all this positive attention and positive reinforcement, uh, then y'all might be getting this avatar instead. Again, not the same thing as being trans, I'm just saying kids go through phases, kids don't know what they want. Speaking of which, the timing was also really convenient for when E decided that they're a girl. They posted this on June 3rd. So basically the start of Pride Month. That could just be when they decided to post, but it just seemed really convenient for the channel and the mom that she decided to come out at the start of Pride Month. Now, a lot of people think the McLeod mom is forcing this on E, and for the most part, I don't think that's true. E seems like they've been wearing dresses for a long time and they look pretty happy, at least on camera. I really, I really hope it's not true. Either way, her mom sometimes posts videos proving that like E wants this all on her own. Hey, what? you're a boy. No, mommy, I'm girl, but no. <laughs> Are you mad at mommy for getting a dress and only taking photos of her? But you're I know. Y'all, I'm sorry, but. This kid is not crying in this video. That is a smile. That's a full bone smile. I don't know what else to say other than this kid is smiling. Come on, that's that's a smile. Now, normally when people accuse the McLeod mom of like staging her videos or feeding her kids lines, I'm like, well, yeah, it's a cute little dancing video. That's normal. But this one, ah, I mean, <laughs> let's call a spade a spade, all right? I want to reiterate, if I didn't already iterate, that I am not critiquing E for being trans. I'm critiquing her mom for exploiting that. Because either way, this is a lose-lose situation. Either the kid will grow up and realize they aren't trans because they made that decision when they were very young and will probably not be super happy with all the videos that exist of them online with their face and full name attached. Or they are trans and are being used as a tool to sell, well, their family. There are other kids in this family, by the way. I didn't even realize there were other kids until I got like pretty deep in their videos because so much of it is focused on just E. And, and then even when the other kids do appear, it's usually only in relation to E. And you sound like you should shut God bless you. She just labels her kids in a really weird way. It's always my disabled son, my autistic daughter, never just my son or even my dear daughter. My little sister is disabled, but like, even saying that out loud sounds weird. It's just weird to put all the emphasis 
on that one thing about her. Like, it's not like disabled is a bad word. She's disabled and like, that's fine to say. But like, it would be such a disservice to make her disability like the core of who she is if I'm introducing her to someone. She's so much more than that. So it's, it's just a really weird thing to do. Like if you always introduced your mom as my brown eyed mom, that would be weird. <laughs> it's kind of the same. It feels exploitative. Oh, but look at, she has to title them that way because it makes the videos more clickable. Yes, dear viewer Chan, and that's weird. It makes her kids more marketable to flatten them down into one dimensional characters. That's weird. It would be disingenuous if we didn't acknowledge the benefit for the McLeod mom. And it's not necessarily just the money. It's the fame. It's the look at me. Look at me and my super interesting family. Look at me and my autistic LGBTQ preschoolers. Talking about them the way that she does feels so weird. Watch me pull glass out of my non-binary kid's LGBTQ foot. Special moment. Aren't I such a good person? Mom stands to benefit a lot from posting the way that she's posting. Look, I'm not a parent, okay? But you don't need to be a parent to see that this is weird. Using your kids and their little baby personalities that have barely even formed as products is weird. And then putting one kid above the others is also weird. I'm not saying that families can't post cute videos. I'm not calling it abusive. I'm not even saying she's making E wear the dresses. I, I don't know, maybe the kid is happy. Maybe they'll grow up and call me a jerk and be completely happy and fine with this very public life altering decision they made when they were six and will be totally fine that they and their siblings were marketed as products. I'm, I'm just, it's weird and not good. And I don't think we should platform it. I don't know y'all, am I overreacting? Tell me what you think of the comments below. Do you think family channels often exploit their kids? I think they do. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so, so much for watching. I love posting. A posting day is a good day. Uh, if you don't follow me on my social medias, you totally, totally should. I'll throw them up on the screen here. Again, thank you so, so much for watching. And until next time, lockout.